Welcome to the John Thompson Exhibition Blog. I'm Yang Mei Ui. Now today, we're going to be talking about the history of dress and photography in 19th century Thailand, also known as Old Siam. And with me to discuss this topic is Lupt Utama. Now Lupt is an independent scholar and curator in the history of dress. He is an Emmy-nominated costume designer, working in the film and TV industry both in Europe and Asia. He specializes in the 19th to early 20th century men's fashion and history of early photography of Thailand. And he is currently working on his doctoral research entitled Visual and Material Translation, King Chula Long Kong, Images and Objects as an Icon of Siamese Modernity for the Department of History, Art and Archaeology at the School of Oriental and African Studies, University of London. So, Lut, welcome. Hello. Thank you for taking part. Hello, hi there. So, thank you very much for inviting me um, to this uh, talk and you know, to be able to share my knowledge and contribute, um, you know, my academic um, um, interest in, in this particular field and especially in you know, early photography of Thailand. So, thank you very much. Brilliant. So now we are going to be looking in detail at a couple of John Thompson's photographs in a moment. But before that, to give us a bit of context for John Thompson's work in Old Siam, looked. can you tell us about the history of early photography and dress? Okay, um, right. Um, it's quite interesting actually because you know, prior to the arrival of photography in Thailand or Siam, there was no visual representation in this particular discourse. You know, so when photography arrived in 1845 um, uh, by the French priest um, uh, Balakua, um, the introduction of this um, newly invented medium of photography is actually was quite frightening. You know, for, for the people of Siam who never understood or allowed to be seen. Uh, to have their, themselves represented in, in the media. And by the time of, you know, of, of early photography, it took quite a while, actually, about, 20, about 10 years, before the first image of a Siamese king was taken. And that was King Mongkut. But it actually wasn't by John Thompson, but that photograph was taken by a court um, photographer. And that was really early technique, it's, um, it's um, direct type. And that was sent to Queen Tory and was kept at the um, Royal Collection in Windsor Castle. And when right. we, and then we're going to be, yeah, okay. I think when we're going to be discussing photograph of, of King Mongkut, right, right, by John Thompson. Okay. Yeah, so let's look at the photograph taken by John Thompson of His Majesty King Rama IV, also known as King Mongkut. Um, so can you tell us about the photo? Right, okay. And, well, First of all, I'm going to show you very quickly of this, this um, historic, um, historical photograph. Um, this is from my little iPad, and this is a picture of King Mongkut, who you see there. And this is from the, um, from the technique, uh, which actually developed later, and it's called Red Collodion process. Red Collodion um, is a process um, where it's glass plates, glass plate um, technique. And it's actually a negative, um, you know, process, and which can be reproduced. It's it's possibly similar to the, you know, what we know is um, kind of black and white, black and white, and, and negative, which now been replaced by digital cameras. I'm sure most of us know, you know, that when we're young, we're using the camera to buy all the rolls of you know of the films. So that actually the kind of grandfather of that technique. And this photograph is really interesting because well, by the time when Thompson came to Siam or Bangkok at the time, he wanted to go to Cambodia to take pictures of Kong Kong Wat. But by being able to go to Cambodia, he had to come to Siam and ask him permission from King Mongkut to be able to go to Cambodia because at the time of mid 19th century, Cambodia was still part of kind of what we call vassal states of, of Siam to ask permission from the king. And when Thompson came to, um, to, um, to Bangkok, um, he came to the Grand Palace, and really interesting because um, I got this really, really interesting note of how before he came to the palace, um, you know, one, one, of the, uh, one of the officers asked Thompson not to touch objects upon the king, otherwise his head might be chopped 
<laughs> so really interestingly, in terms of you know cultural <laughs> cultural nuances of you know at the time that even a king you know when the king himself cannot be gazed upon by anyone in the foreigner. So it's you know it's very interesting um, time and practice that the king allow himself to be photographed and to be gazed upon by the photographer and the audience. So these photographs, um, which are very interesting, um, the king's actually wearing a French merchant, well, king dress uniform, or military uniform, or diplomatic dress uniform. And the nature of this uniform is interesting because um, this uniform was sent by um, Napoleon, uh, king, um, Emperor Napoleon III of France as part of state presence. And in this photograph, um, King Moncut was actually was wearing um, the medal of Legion d'Honneur, who was sent um, along with his uniform. And this part of the um, and this this part of the costume, the king himself um, wearing a French uniform, but with very dis different trousers, kind of mismatch color, which actually for me very interesting in itself, the inaccuracies, you know, because it portrayed that king or even people in Siam did not truly understand yet the implication of European dress culture. However, the king dressed for the camera. So this is very interesting. So, so this is very interesting because it tells us that King Mongkut was a, a modern king and he was connected and he was interested in global affairs and that there was diplomacy between Thailand and, and the French, um, and that this was what he wanted to portray of himself as a modern, globalized, uh, and a uh, modern, globalized Thailand. Yes, and then even, even and this photograph, if you look at it very, uh, very closely, um, we can look this, at this photograph as a cultural image. What I mean, cultural inventory is actually not a photograph itself, but the items embedded within these photographs. Um, what we can see here uh, on my on my left hand side, it's a table, it's a round table, and on top of the table we see, you know, um, possibly Indian brocade, fringe tablecloth, which actually imported from India. And on top of that, we have a French cap embroidered with, in, with um, the king's insignia. It's actually the crowd. And with actually a synonym to his name, Mongut in Thai, which means crowd. And, um, you know, both sides of the crowd is actually fighter canopy. And on top of that, we could see a very small item next to the cap is actually telescope, which actually very interesting because it's actually portrayed the king interest in astronomy, which he was so, you know, he was so amazing with it. And also it's part of the, um, of the symbol or symbolic um, item of the interest of early modernity. Um, but well, however, if you look um, through this uh, photograph again, we could see that the king actually didn't actually wear socks. He's only wearing slippers. And this again showing the understanding of the culture and then also the interest of you know of the king himself you know to to be part of this global elite uh, modernity and this part of the global Victorian equipment at the time of the, you know, of the 19th century. So it's, so, yeah. it's interesting because um, for us, uh, you were just saying just now how we um, just take photographs with our phones and our digital cameras and it's for ourselves. And, but, but the image is so important in conveying a message, di uh, conveying a diplomatic message um, that has all these yes. things that can be read about it. Yes. I mean, indeed, actually, because I, mean, I think to this day, we forget that, you know, during, during the time of the, when photographers introduced, it was such a new medium and people didn't understand what, what it actually was, you know. However, um, nobility and royalties around the world, I think, started to realise the importance of their self-representation, you know, their gaze, and, and the, then they starting to adopt photography as part of cultural and you know cultural di you know diplomatic and you know uh, as, as a medium in which they could portray the monarchy or could become you know a global a global uh, well tool of, of being seen and actually 
representing themselves around the world. So this, we, we get that this day because photography comes so easy, right? With our phones, you know, we can add chat on social media instantly. At the time, the anxiety to come with us because nobody would know what the result would come out. You know, both photographer, you know, by the technique, they have to develop, you know, the glass plates with dark room, that pot in dark room. So photography at the time can also come with anxiety, you know, and also, yeah, so there's something that we, this day we forget that, you know, it, with the technique and everything, you do not, not everyone could be, could be a photographer. Yes, particularly in those days with the big camera and the, the wet collodion technique you were, you were saying. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's fantastic. Okay, so um, we also have a photograph by John Thompson of His Highness Prince Chulalongkorn, who would become King Rama V. So could you talk us through that photo? Yes, of course. I mean, this is, okay, let me show um, you. And this is the, um, the photograph of Prince Rangkorn, aged 13 years old. And this photograph is so important in terms of um, you know, cultural, um, it, it had his own cultural and political agency. Because um, what we see here, we see Prince Rangkorn wearing um, a typical um, dress of the, of, of the princess of the, um, of the Siamese court. Um, the kings ran an uh, you know, uh, Indian brocade and possibly Indian brocades both topped and the bottoms of the garment, which in Thai we call Dongkraben. Dongkraben, it's actually quite similar to Indian dhoti. You know, um, it's kind of wrapped at, at the waist and then tucked between the legs and then using the end tucking at the back. And the, the pattern itself is actually interesting. Very fine patterns that actually only reserved for the princess of the court and the princesses of the royal blood only to, to, to wear this. And the king actually, well, sorry, still the prince, actually, Prince Ralunkorn at the time was wearing a top knot, um, and which uh, we believe that to protect the spirit, the uh, evil spirit, to enter from the crown of the head. So and from this photograph, Sorry, the, yeah. so just, just to focus on the fabrics, because that's really interesting, and they're very, very fine, detailed, really intricate fabrics. So would these have been made in Thailand or India? No, no, it's in India, definitely, because at the time, Indian, um, Indian silk brocades, um, Indian chins, Indian printed cottons, I was really highly priced and were actually ordered by, um, by the court. And in particular, um, princess of different ranks, the queens, you know, princesses, princess and nobility, they were given these garments as part of their annual income. So again, it's sort of that the, the globe we, we are we learn from this the global trade between India and, and Thailand, so a different angle on that global aspect. Exactly. And also at the time, it's not just about the costume you can see here. Um, the element is very interesting, actually. It's a Chinese chardonnier just behind the prince. So this is um, showing or, or telling us the relationship between um, the court of Siam, not just with India, but with China as well. And that is actually at the end of the Qing dynasty. And we can see here, I think when, because it's black and white um, photograph, normally it could, be, could have been um, um, blue and white porcelain. And because it's that, um, hexagonal as well, we can tell that it's actually the late Qing um, when this happened in every sense. However, uh, with, the, uh, with the lot of, of open war uh, by uh, North China and Britain, um, the court of Siam stopped the retreat to China with the Qing. And then coming back and looking at the French and the British um, empire instead. So you can see not just not just the cultural but the political events that actually uh, um, penetrate um, penetrate um, the region at the time. So it just a tap in the air already tell us a lot of story about about the political tensions in Zayan and China. How interesting is that? That's why I think when you look at photograph, it's so important actually contextualizing photograph as cultural inventory because. Every item, every setup in here telling us stories 
And I was, um, I was having this academic debate with a few of my colleagues and my professors about when is this photograph taken? And people say, oh, maybe the afternoon, maybe early morning, the lights are like come from, from the side through, you know, or from the right hand, from the right hand shoulder coming down. And as I said, definitely the morning. I said, how do you know you? Well, because on the, at the top knot, you can see the garden of flower jasmine. It's not bloom yet. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been done in the early morning by the lady of the court. So you can see the flower, you can tell this photograph is taken possibly before 10 o'clock. Wow, that's fantastic. It's almost like um, you're, you're, when you talk me through these two photographs, it's like CSI. You know, you look okay. at the evidence and what you can tell. It's fascinating. And you have thrown such a, a, a lot of light on this, these photographs, which give have given me, and I hope our, our, our audience, um, that the context, the, the history, the relationships, the global relationships, um, and even the time of day. So thank you very much, Luke. That is absolutely fantastic. It's my pleasure. It's my um, pleasure. And I hope to see everyone at the John Thompson exhibition. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Um, I hope everyone uh, that you'll be interested be um, piqued by Loop's uh, CSI forensic examination of these wonderful <laughs> photographs um, by John Thompson. And if you're interested to come to see the actual prints, because they're going to be pretty big size on, on the wall, so you can actually look at all the details um, that, that, that Loop's talked us through. Uh, it's the John Thompson exhibition, uh, and it's called Through the Lens of John Thompson. It's at the Brunei Gallery at SOAS in London from the 13th of April to the 23rd of June. And the best thing about that is that it's free. Um, so to find out more, please go to the website, johnthompsonexhibition.org.